Hey guys, welcome back to VR Essentials. Today, very cool video as I'm going to be starting a beginner's guide to the MetaQuest 3 for those who want to learn about how to use it from the get-go and there'll be different tutorials posted in a special playlist which is this one. So do make sure to hit the notification bell after you subscribe to be notified of all those juicy tutorial videos that I'll be posting up to the platform. In other news, before we start in today's video which is all about how to learn how to record using the MetaQuest 3 in various different formats, just FYI. There is a new baby coming to the channel very soon, guys. Yes, I caved in after four years, and especially the last year, things have been a little bit complicated with all the various different updates with NVIDIA, OBS, and all the various different softwares. It is time, guys, to upgrade to a new PC, a 470 Ti i7 13700, uh, 13, 1600 kf is coming to the channel guys i didn't want to go for the 480 because it's just a little bit more exorbitant in terms of price and also come on with the everyday average joe guys this is the channel for the everyday average joe so i'm not going to go and buy the 490 if you can't afford a 490 it just doesn't make sense to me and i'm not going to go and buy a 480 if the majority of you cannot afford also a 480 I think the majority can afford a 470 or 470 Ti and I did test uh, today actually the Pico 4 with virtual desktop using a 470 at work and a AMD Ryzen 7, uh, I think it was a 7400 or something like that, 7K plus and it was a beauty and I just thought, you know what, I don't need a 480, why am I getting a 484, it's an extra whatever hundred few hundred dollars per month because I'm paying an installment so I'm like no way and also my 12 uh, my RTX 2070 i7 9700k which cost me four thousand US dollars four years ago is now worth a mere 500 US dollars 600 maybe I can sell it for at most 700 if I'm lucky so guys 4k 700 dollars within four years no way am I spending that much money again. I've learned my lesson once. I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. So I think the 470 Ti i7 13600KF is just a good sweet spot. All right, guys, let's start today's video, which is all about learning how to record in, in various different formats using your MetaQuest 3. Let's dive into VR. All right, so now we're inside of the actual MetaQuest 3. So let's just go, as you can see, it's recording here on the video. We just go to settings and then basically this is where you go to change the actual uh, settings of the camera. So in order to access this, by the way, all you have to do is go to camera here and then you can choose to take a photo or go live, all these kind of different things. And then we just click on settings and then boom, we're back inside of camera. So the things that you can do are allow VR photos and videos to sync automatically to your mobile app. If this setting is off, you can still sync individual pieces of media. So this is really cool because it enables you to send all the media directly to the actual phone without having to transfer the files. Video capture indicators. So show a red dot, which is basically this little red dot on top. It's actually a red plus. It used to be an actual round dot, but now it's like a plus. Video recording, and this is what's pretty cool. You can reset everything to default, of course. Choose which eye's perspective to capture when recording video, the left eye or the right eye. Image stabilization, so you can choose how much to reduce the appearance of headset movement in videos. Increasing stabilization will decrease the recorded field of view. So just know of that as you increase stabilization, it will decrease the recorded field of view. So for me, I put it on medium, but of course you could put it on high or low or just turn it off automatically. Uh, I mean, altogether, excuse me. And then in post-production, you can then basically, you know, do the stabilization there. Now, what I like about this is the aspect ratio. Choose a default format and resolution for video recording. So you can choose actually do portrait for basically YouTube shorts or for, you know, other kind of shorts on the meta uh, platforms. You can also do landscape for normal videos or you can do square. Square can be pretty cool. For example, if you want to record two different things uh, and you want to put them side by side, then, you know, this could be a good format to use. But for me, of course, I use landscape 920 uh, by 1080p. So this is HD. There is no 4K option at the moment. So hopefully this will come in a update later. For the frame rate, great that they have 24 uh, frames per second for more of a cinematic experience. If you want something that looks a little bit more flat, then you can go for 36 frames per second. It could be good, for example, for... 
uh, you know, environments that have too much light or more lighting, maybe, and 24 FPS for perhaps environments that have a little bit of less lighting. And bitrate also, higher bitrates will improve video quality, but also increase file size, FYI. So for me, I used 15, but you can go all the way to 20, of course. Um, 20 is, is good for low light. 15 is good for what the lighting is good now. 10 is okay for, let's say, daylight should be okay. 5 Mbps, I definitely would would definitely not use 5 Mbps if really you have no space, then maybe fine as a backup, but that's about it. So 15 should be just good, but 20, of course, is the ideal size. So there you go, guys. That is exactly how you actually change the camera settings in order to create various different things. And of course, let me just see if I change the recording, what's going to happen. So now I'm actually on Square. I don't know whether it's going to record on Square or not as I'm recording, as you can see just now. And then let me just change it to landscape. Now it's changed to landscape. I don't know if it's changed the recording live or whether I have to stop the recording or start the recording. We'll try this and, you know, together. And then I'm going to put it back on, sorry, portrait now, which is where it's vertical for shorts. I don't know if it's changed it as well or whether I have to stop the recording and then record again. I'm not quite sure. But we'll see as a test shot, and then I'll just put it back to landscape as that's the format I'm actually using. And then to stop, just go to camera and then click on recording again. By the way, guys, just taking the camera off the tripod, if you're trying to transfer files but you have an issue, make sure to plug your Quest 3, this one here with the cable, the USB cable inside of the side itself, and then put that into your PC. Make sure that your head is, if possible, already inside of the headset. You'll see a pop-up that comes up to say, please click on this uh, to, to enable your computer to give it permission to read the files. Otherwise, you will have some problems, just to let you know. And also make sure you do it quick because the pop-up actually goes away after a few, well, I think it's about 10, 15 seconds later it just goes. So then you have to redo the entire process. And also try not to, oh, I also put my thumb on the actual sensor to make sure the headset was still, didn't go to sleep. Because I found that for me anyway, maybe for you it's different. Do leave a comment below, of course. If I, if it went to sleep, then unfortunately it wouldn't allow me to transfer the files, which is quite strange, right? So I put my thumb there, but you can put some tape or something, you know, some masking tape or something on the sensor. So it will never go to sleep by, uh, basically after a few seconds. And also we will dive into the going to sleep and keeping it on and all this kind of stuff in a future video. So do hit the notification bell for that video also, of course. But um, I'm just saying that, yeah, put my thumb and then don't try to copy multiple files at once. It may not allow you to do that. So just do it one at a time. It will save the files as MP4 files, everybody not .mov like uh, Apple and, you know, their kind of things. Although .mov does have better detail in the files, MP4 is compressed, but still, I think uh, you can be the judge of today's video. I think it's still okay. And of course, my lighting in the room is very, very dark, quite dim, only the red and the blue, although it looks purple almost, I mean, pink almost, but it's actually red. Um, so, you know, there you go. All right, guys. Let's continue the video. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned a thing or two. Smash the like so more people get to see today's video and discover it so we can grow together the VR Essentials YouTube community. And by the way, today's video is sponsored by VR-Wave.Store. 5% discount, everybody, 5% discount using the promo code VR Essentials as we try to provide you, well, I try to provide you discounts as well, not just promote something for the sake of promoting it. But guys, I've been working them for four years with the HP Reverb G2. They are sending me some Pimax crystal lenses as well as, of course, uh, you know, Met MetaQuest 3 lenses as well. And they're also sending me some Pico 4 lenses, even though it's a bit late, but that's my fault. I didn't go and get my eyes checked in time. So there you go. But guys, yeah, 5% discount, 5% discount with the promo code VR Essentials. Details in the link description below. Hit the notification bell for future juicy videos after you subscribe. And of course, the likes so more people get to discover the YouTube VR Essentials community. Bye for now, guys. Take it easy. Bye 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 bye.